Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker is Michael Tranmer. Michael helps launch new online coaches so that they can powerfully serve their clients. He has engineered a system that guides new coaches to get clarity on their message, develop their programs, and land their first clients. I'd like to invite you to put your hands together and give Michael Tranmer a warm, warm VBN welcome. You jump started things over here. Oh, let's go back one. Thank you. I'll start with this based on the questions we had in the intro. You're all coaches already. Everyone is a leader in here that, that, that someone looks up to, that someone looks up to each and every day. So yes, you can be a coach for the new coaches. For those who don't say they are coaches, you are coaches. You're, everyone's a leader. Everyone's a leader to someone else. The other thing is, and this came up a, a lot earlier on, self-promotion. Self-promotion, you need confidence. Confidence can be built, confidence you can, you can, you can gain, confidence you can, you can grow within yourself. And the third thing that we'll touch on, so if you remember nothing, if you've just turned out, if you leave right now, you'll, you're still gonna be pretty good. <laughs> the third thing we're gonna touch on, and a lot of people talking about social media, how to get more business off social media, all of that stuff, social media. Oh. Excellent talk was given right here in this exact location, February 6th, perhaps. I gave a talk on that exact topic. So if you go to the YouTube site for Vancouver Business Network, it'll be a great starting point. I gave a talk on how to use Instagram to, to get clients and grow your business. That being said, that being said, I, and I'm working with the people that I work with as well right now, don't just focus on social media. I just had this conversation outside. Nurture the existing relationships you have in this place that is so magical. It's called the real world. Well, let's let's get into it. Also, thank you for coming. It's great to be here. It's an honor to be up here, and uh, it's a really powerful group we have in here, and it's a it's a real honor to be up here in this spot. And this is what I'm, we're going to be talking about today: that the steps for for coaches to land new clients, and this really applies to all sorts of entrepreneurs. Everyone wants to to grow their business attract new attention, take their business to, to the next level. So there's lots of stuff in here. If, you're not, if, you're, if your business card does not say, say coach of some sort, there's a lot of items in here that still apply to everyone. As for the mistakes, made them all and continue to make new ones each and every day. So I've been there, I've been there when you are just getting started out in this new coaching journey. And that's what it looks like. It, it's tough. It's hard. You you don't have the clients. You're you really want to get going, but you're you're stuck. You don't know. And we've heard this a couple of times earlier. You don't know which direction to take, what to do, what the steps are. You can't you can't visualize and, and see what it is. And because of that, your your confidence is is very low. And that energy that you give off with that low confidence that that percolates out through through social media, through through the real world, and it's this this infinite loop that that isn't really serving you, that isn't really helping you attract the people that you want to work with. And that's where it starts. Any, any hockey fans in here? Any Toronto Maple Leaf hockey fans? <laughs> April 2013, you remember? Oh, see, do you see that look? Oh, it's so painful. It's so, this is where this photo is from. <laughs> I do vaguely remember that. Doug Gilmore. This photo in April or early May 2013, the Leafs, first round, playoffs, playing the, the our nemesis. I'm from Kingston, Ontario, so I, I'm a, a long time suffering forever Toronto Maple Leaf fan. They were playing Boston, game seven. They're about to do the impossible and, and beat Boston to go on to the next round. Game seven, they're up 4-1 with 16 minutes left to play in the third period. Yeah, it's basically, it's basically a done deal. 
not so fast. Boston scores 4-2. They score a couple minutes later, 4-3, and then they score with, with one or two minutes left in, in the game to tie it up, game seven. At that, point, at that point, we knew it was all going downhill. Two minutes, two minutes into, into overtime, Boston scores to, to win the series, crush all our hopes and desires of, of that big win, and this exact moment happened right there. And the reason I show that is that same feeling, those same thoughts, that same, that same dread can, can, really, can really challenge us when we're looking to get going in our, in our coaching business. Now, why is this important? Why, why is what you're doing and making these new steps, these move, new moves into your coaching world, why is this important? It's important for you because for a lot of people that get into coaching, and I'm a huge believer in coaching, and you'll hear more about that in, in a little bit. We've been through something, or we know we really want to help people on, on a deeper level, on a higher level. And we're so passionate about this, and we can't continue on our, our current path that, that we are on in our life or in our business without exploring this other route of coaching and helping other people out. We know that our best life is, is through business success. It builds up the confidence. It builds up the financial means to explore and do all that we want to do. And we know, we know, we know deep down that whatever we have been through, whatever training we have, whatever we believe in so passionately can really help other people's lives. And so this, all these things link together to the motivation that's going to be so important, which is, which is what is your, what is your why for, for putting yourself through this? through this journey of, of becoming a coach. Because during those tough times, when, when you're getting challenged finding, trying to find new clients, or you're yelling at a web page, or a webinar is going sideways, all those things, you gotta return to, to what is my why? What is my why for getting into coaching? And I know Roger mentioned earlier that you don't need to take notes. But for those people that are taking notes, I would, I would really encourage you to let this be your first one for when you go home later tonight is, is write down what is, what is my coaching why? And give, give that a little bit of thought overnight into tomorrow. Why am I putting myself through this? Why am I, why am I taking on this new journey? And that's really gonna be your motivation during those tough times. A little bit more about myself. So I help launch new online coaches. My background is 12 years in engineering. And so I'm starting, I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more on, on doing group coaching and empowering young professional engineers as well. So I have, I have two streams really. I help out new coaches, new, new wellness coaches that want to get into the online space. And then I work with empowering young engineers. And what I find with, with the engineers, and, and I was one of them, so I've made all of these mistakes myself before, we really struggle with the soft skills. Does anybody in here know any engineers? Can, can you relate to that, right? But these things can be learned. I've learned to do this. I've learned by going to Toastmasters, to this incredible group that I've been a part of the last little while, to come up here and be confident and present like this and, and share these skills. And I'm really passionate about helping, helping these poor engineers. And I just look at myself back five, 10 years ago, where I was really looking for a service like this to, to show me a different way, to show me a different model on, on how I could operate. Book in progress. I've write, written a book about what I'm about to tell you about my story. It's, it's best described as in, pro, in progress right now. It's... Uh, for the writers, and there was a question in here earlier about all the mistakes you can make when writing a book. I, I have a few, I have a few. What's the book about? This is, this is what the book is about. In my background, like I mentioned, I'm from, from Kingston, Ontario, moved out to, to British Columbia to go to university at University of Victoria, got the engineering degree. After that, settled down in, in Vancouver, you know, working in a consulting engineering job, moved in with my girlfriend who became my wife at the time. And we, we did all the things. We did all the Vancouver things for, for quite a while. We did all the trips, you know, did the Whistler thing, did, I did all the biking, um, you know, windsurfing and surfing and all that great stuff. And 
and we built up our life together and, it, and we have the place to live over in, in Fairview. And it was good, but it wasn't great. In both aspects and in, in the relationship and also in my engineering work. You know, I was doing it, I was really good at it. I was great, getting some great success, but it was never really my thing. It was never the thing that really made my heart sing. And so when the marriage came to a sudden ending, it was hard. It was unexpected. It happened very quickly. It was hard for everyone involved, not just me and her, but all our families and, and friends that were involved as well. And for a guy with a, with a big heart, it was, it was really my rock bottom. And for those that have hit, and, hit similar rock bottoms in, in your life, you know how, how hard that can be but also how transformative that can be as well. And I just remember, I remember thinking as an engineer, I, the first thing I did, I'd never ever written a journal before in my life. I'm like, I have to write this down and figure out what happened so I never get back in this same position again. I have to figure out whatever possible it is so I can learn from this and not get back into that pain. I also remember thinking that if something external can happen, to put me into this, this state of despair, there must be a way that I can regenerate myself and, and learn and grow to, to get happy again. So that's what I did. I, I, you know, I made the commitment to, to pick myself off that same, that same carpet that you, you saw earlier. Quite the uh, carpet in my life. I made the commitment to do that. I made the commitment to pick myself up and learn and grow and get back to my my myself, which myself, which had now been completely cracked apart as my ego had just been, been shattered. So I made that commitment and I started to get clarity because I had all this new space in my life. I really had uh, an option to do, to do whatever I wanted in my world. You know, I could, I could, I could move, I could do a new job. I mean, what do I want to do? This, this is the only path that I, that I know. And within this, this clarity, I started having these, these realizations, both, uh, both about my old self and, and what went wrong, but also about what I wanted to create in my future going forward. So I was making some progress. I was having these breakthroughs, but then I was crushing back down into these, these low points. I was going up and down. I was up and down. And I, I couldn't really sustain it up here on, on the high. And that's when I hired a coach of my own. And I was like, we need to do whatever it takes to focus in up here. So I can create what I want to create going forward. I can be who I want to be. You know, I had this blank canvas. What do I want to put on it? And so that relationship, that, that interaction with a coach one-on-one -on -one with my own was so transformative and so powerful that I just became so passionate about it. I was sharing everything that I was learning with people around me. I was sharing on, on social media as well. And people were starting to really pay attention to what I was teaching and, and what I was going through. And through that process, I realized that I too can share these things that I'm learning with other people. And I too am a coach. This is the thing that's been in me this whole time. And the reality is I've always been a coach, whether back in, back in high school and university teaching sports. And then even in, in engineering as a project manager, you're, you're coaching people, you're organize pe organizing people, you're helping them think straight each and every day. So I started coaching people. I started helping people out as well. After that, I'm so fortunate to go on a, a two and a half month journey through Central America where I wrote about all this. I started drafting out the, the manuscript of, of my book and really continuing on in this process and working with more people and getting more clients. And that was about a year ago. And over this past year, I've come back to Vancouver. I've started doing things like this, literally. Just started doing things like this, getting on stage, telling my story, learning how to speak, getting certified uh, as a coach, helping more people, retiring from engineering a couple months ago to fully pursue what I want to do. And my message is each and every one of you can do your version of, of that as well. And it's fully possible. And my hope and my plan and my gift for you right now is to save you some sort of time and effort and struggle in there by sharing all the mistakes that I made. Let's get to it. So here we are, the five high impact steps for 
for new coaches to, to grow their business. You guys ready to go? Yes. You guys ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is a good one. This is a good one. How to start coaching. You got to just start coaching. So many people make the same mistake of procrastinating, putting it off until they do another seminar or they do another course or they get another certification or they travel to Phoenix to go to another, another seminar. You know, maybe after I go to this thing in, in March, I'll, I'll start my coaching business. You need to just start and get in there. Why is that important? Because you will not know. And for, if you're taking notes, circle this one right here. You will not know the thing you need to improve on until you start doing the thing. You will not know the thing you need to improve on until you start doing the coaching. Which aspect is it? Is it the getting the client? Is it, is it working with the people one-on-one? -on -one? Is it self-promoting yourself? Is it, is it getting on stage? Whichever one of those things. You're never going to know until you get right into the fire. But absolutely, do the, do the courses, do the seminars, continually build yourself up and grow. But at the same time, get in there, get in the mix, get in the fire and, and do the coaching. Same thing, people, people delay starting until they have a, a perfect website or they, they have the, the most beautiful Instagram with all the tiles and all the stuff, all perfect, right? They're gonna wait for five months of doing that before they, before they get in the mix. The other, the other real challenge is after they get the perfect Instagram and, and the perfect website and they've got a whole list of courses and seminars that they've been to, they wait for people to come to them like this. That doesn't work either. You need to be quite proactive to, to interact with your followers, interact with your network, interact with the people that are your, your potential clients. And we'll get it more into that in a bit as well. So best thing you can do if you are thinking about coaching, if you're interested in, in starting your own coaching, be it one-on-one -on -one or, or group or online courses, just dive right in, just dive right in and get into it. Oh, I was just thinking about how I have made all these mistakes, but also sometimes I also continue to make some of these mistakes. So number two, the best thing you can do is put on the blinders for this aspect only and really focus on, on you, on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to create. The problem is where we waste a ton of energy. So this applies to all, so this applies to all sorts of businesses, anything people are trying to create. We waste so much energy. So if you're writing down, this is another one. We waste so much energy comparing to other people. So much energy where we just need to stay focused. We need to stay in our lane. How, how I do that, I am, I am, I'm, I'm kind of like an engineer, right? I, I have, <laughs> I'll share. So, I mean, I went away um, a couple weekends ago, left my phone in Vancouver. This, made, this, this makes some people actually quite uncomfortable. I went away for five days to Cortez Island, which is a, a bus and a, and a plane ride and a bus and a ferry and a bus and, a, and another ferry. It is out there. I left my phone in Vancouver on purpose because I went there. And one of the things I wanted to do was, was plan out the rest of my year. I wanted to plan out my 10-year goals, my five-year goals, my two-year goals, my six-month goals, my three-month goals. And within that, and then within that, there's what I'm doing this month and now what I'm doing on this particular day. And for me, if I have these things that I need to focus on in my business, in my life, I can, I can just stay in that track. But often what we do is we get in the thing, right? We get on the thing and we get distracted going sideways with, with other people's lives and we compare with other coaches and, and other businesses with people that are further ahead than us. It doesn't serve us. It does not serve us. Wasted energy. So instead, refocus all that energy and just turn it into action on what you need to do today, this week, this month. Focus on you. Ah, here we go. It's a little bit what I was talking about earlier. Social media, absolutely. Absolutely, it's great. And there's different ways to, to use it. We were talking earlier about online courses and the, 
the image I see, I don't have not created an online course yet, but online courses, if you're selling something that exists and doesn't need you, I believe that is a great place to sink a lot of money into, into advertising. Facebook advertising, just run to this thing all day, all night long. If you're doing online or one-on-one -on -one coaching, I don't believe that is a great use of your time or your money. Why? Because we all have all these real world relationships that we already have already from, from our past life. And what happens is, and I, so I've done all these things too. What happens is when, when I made the transition from the engineering world to the coaching world, you know, engineering world's over here, we'll call it what it is. And I started doing this thing over here. I had this really thick black, painted line down the middle where I didn't want this world to see what I was doing over here because this is completely new and I'm behaving and acting and showing up in a completely different way because it's tough, right? When people over here see you doing this thing over here, you're going to get in your head about what they are thinking about you. So what we do is we hide from that. Over time, that gets easier to address. The world's getting mixed. So what I love to encourage my clients to do is, is look back over here at this world. You know, people I work with typically have 10 to 15 years in the corporate world. And then they're starting to do this dance over here. These are real people over here that know you and like you and trust you already. These are your people. These are your people. Talk to these people. Nurture these relationships. Sure, you're showing up in a different way and perhaps you are not going to be working one-on-one -on -one with them, but they may know somebody. It's like we spend all this energy building up all this, this contact with strangers over here in social media when that can just be finely picked and tuned at the people that, that we already know. Once this is going, once you've got a good base of clients out of your real world, sure, spend some time over here making your website more fancy, building a funnel if you have a, a course or something like that down the road. Uh, spend more time on your social media when, when that is right. When you're venturing into your own world, what, how does the conversation go? Question is, when you're venturing into your old world, how does the conversation go? Typically people, everybody's watching everyone, so they already know what's going on, especially if you're already on social media to an extent. But a lot of people are really curious about it. And so it's up to, up to you who is, is dancing into this new world to, to help them understand what you're doing and perhaps if there is a way for you to help them or, or someone else within their, in their world. But people are curious, people are curious. And so if you've got someone already coming to you that's curious about what you're doing, tell them. Tell them loud, tell them proud. Because they'll tell other people and people feed off what happens with new coaches and we're all so jazzed and stoked to get into this new field and help people out. But then we, we, we crouch down over here when, when our old world starts asking questions or looking at us sideways. Just show up fully, show up fully, transmit that energy, transmit that vibe and then they'll spread that on to potential clients for, for you. What I was really wondering, in the, in the old world, there's 250 people who know, like, and trust you. If you do 250 coffee meetings and explain the new world and how they might be able to help, ask for referrals, how do you, how do, you do that? Now, how, do you, how do you pick which people in the old world to interact with? Yeah, yes, and then how do you interact with them? Coffee, real world. Okay. real world or a phone call I was on a phone call today with a engineering classmate of mine from how many years ago and he's in he's in Calgary so but we have not talked in in all these years okay. but real world yeah I'm going for a coffee tomorrow with someone real world you, you initiated the call yes you did the invitation yes okay. yes yes strategically because I knew perhaps that he may have some, some contacts that may support me. Yeah. Lesson learned, not on here. When you do start putting yourself out on social media, you do get some 
requests to, to meet in the real world, you'll make about four of those mistakes where you become more conscious about which ones do not serve you at all and waste a lot of your time. That's, that, takes, that takes a little, <laughs> learn, little learning, a little dancing. That definitely happens. So focus on, focus on the quality of these, of nurturing these, these existing contacts of people that you have in, in your existing world. Focus on those quality, <laughs> go to coffee and fully be present with them and, and tell them what you're into and, and what you're up to. Instead of doing, spending all this energy with this massive blast over, over social media. The other point I wanted to make on, on that is when you are starting to get your first couple clients, Focus your complete energy and presence on them and just completely overserve them and blow them away. Completely blow them away. Give them more than you had ever, ever thought or imagined you could. Give them extra whatever it is. Just lift them up completely and then there's this, this is the old thing that, that used to work in business and it still works today. It's called word of mouth. Word of mouth and referrals. And some folks in here know, know how well and powerful that that can be. So just really focus on, on over-serving the, the clients that you already have. Oh, all right. Who here would like more confidence? All right. Everyone stand up for, for just one second. This will be good. We all do. We all do. Confidence is the key to, to so many beautiful things. So close your eyes. Thank you for, for playing along with me and everyone at home on the video as well. Okay, we're in deep breath in. Ah, deep breath out. Ah, one more time. Deep breath in. Deep breath, let that out. And keep your eyes closed. Keep breathing. I want you to hold in your mind quickly if you can pull in, uh, pull in, in an avatar or a role model or, or some, someone, someone out there in the world, a movie star or something. Someone that you look up to that's perhaps a little bit badass. <laughs> so see them, see them off in the corner. Maybe it's, maybe it's Bruce Lee, maybe it's George Clooney for the boys whoever it may be. Now all the vision of yourself standing beside this badass, engaging with them, having a real conversation, hanging out like buds. Hold this vision of this strong, powerful, impressive, firmly grounded and rooted version of yourself hanging out with your role model. Keep breathing. So hold this version of your, your highest self, your most badass self. Keep breathing. Now in a minute, not yet, in a minute we're gonna open our eyes, we're gonna turn to the person beside us. Who is your role model? Who is your badass person that you wanna be like in some, some form, in your highest, most confident self? You're going to give them a freaking high five. Carefully. And you're going to, at the same time, you're going to yell out, yes! So on the count of three, you're going to open your eyes and turn to the person beside you, showing up as your strongest, most powerful, confident future self. And you give that person beside you a high five. One, two, three. Yes! Yes! yes. 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 Who feels better? Who feels good? Who feels a little energized? It's good. I do all sorts of weird things in my condo when, when there's no one else around, handstands, playing loud music, doing things like this, really just getting that vision, that, that future of, of who I wanna show up as. 
do whatever it takes to, to make sense for you to generate that confidence each and every day. Go for a run in the morning, do the meditation, journal like a badass in, in your journal about how you want to show up, what you want to accomplish. It is so very important for coaching because people are attracted to confidence. It's like this magnet. It's this electric electromagnetic field that develops from from your thoughts in your head and the energy coming out of your heart goes like this pulls people in how do you get more confidence in coaching you do more coaching and again this circles back to to that piece in the beginning where you just want to get you just want to get started and you just want to to dive in so coach everyone in the beginning coach everyone that is open for it <laughs> this, I, I actually struggle having uh all right i'll tell you i mean uh yeah a lot of my dates recently have just turned into one-on-one -on -one coaching <laughs> it's true yeah i can't help it but then they love it too they're up for it. they're getting free coaching it's great doesn't work for for a date right but that's all right but people that are open for it in the beginning just just coach everyone coach your friends get some people to, to commit to you you know get get your friend go listen if, if I was starting coaching right now, here's what I would do. I would get five of my friends, five of my coworkers, five people that know me in the real world. I would say, listen, I'm, I'm starting this new venture. So enthused about it. I know I can help you. I know I can help a lot of people. Can you please commit for free? Or maybe they have a service that they could give you a haircut or a pedicure or something, whatever, whatever it is. For one month, so you have five people, one month, we're gonna talk one hour every week. Five people, one month, you talk to each of them for one hour every week. So you have 20, 20 phone calls in, in that month. At the end of the month, you have five clients that you've worked with and you've been through a process with them. You, you've helped transform their lives. You've grown your confidence and you also have five testimonials. Assuming you crushed it and you have crushed it and you will cut, crush it, crush it because you do some sort of dance like we just did each and every morning to grow your confidence. That is what I would do if I was starting out right at the ground floor. Practice grows confidence. Do more coaching to build confidence in coaching. Would you be explicit about part of the deal is the testimonial? Yes. You don't ambush them with that halfway through. It's right up front. That's right. Yeah. If you're going to get into an arrangement like that, where you perhaps do free coaching to start, go, this is, this is the agreement. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you four hours of my time over this month. It's going to be powerful. It's going to help transform your life in whichever area you're, you're working at. And for that, you're going to give me a video testimonial and you're, and you're going to give me a written testimonial. And there's, there's seven questions. If anyone wants them that are really powerful that you can give to, to someone, to really help structure those, both those testimonials. If anyone's interested in that, just, just let me know. After you've nurtured your, your real world people and you, you've made some good connections and you, you've helped do some, get some clients out of them, and you are starting to spend more time on social media, the one mistake that I made and so many people make is is putting a lot of time and energy into creating content that goes nowhere. I've done it. So many people do it again. I would recommend going back to the February talk that was here. That's on YouTube for the Vancouver business network that really helps structure how you want to craft your message messages and craft your posts and craft, craft your content so that it helps you lead into getting more business. And again, this, can be not just for coaches, but all sorts of entrepreneurs, how you can use social media to, to grow your business. What you're doing when you get into to social media is you're starting with these strangers out there to build this no like and trust relationship. So there's a process, it takes time. The way you can speed up this process is by doing more video. Almost forget everything else almost forget everything else and focus quite a bit on video because people buy from people. People aren't gonna just buy from your, your coaching program. They're gonna buy for that. Coaching is a very intimate relationship. It's very powerful. It's very powerful and I, you know, I believe so much in it, but it, it's very,
close and intimate. And people buy from people they want to know who, who they're going to be working with. The absolute best way to, to build that relationship is by doing more video. You say video, where video in a Facebook, YouTube, <laughs> or, um, what would be the topics? Do it on whichever platform. The, the question was where to, where to do the videos and use the platforms that you're already using that you're most comfortable with. If you're on Facebook and you have a following there, do it, do it there. If you're starting somewhere new, Instagram, or you're building up a YouTube channel, do, do it there. You can do video on, on LinkedIn now. So do it, do it wherever you are. What was the second piece of your question? The topics. The topics, the topics that you're going to talk, talk about are the topics that you're teaching about, the topics of your business, the topics of your product or service. The best, best, best way and I'll give you an example. I know a really, really good realtor here in Vancouver. She has an amazing Instagram page and she just gives out so much information about all her, all her listings. And that's her business. She doesn't hide any of it back. She, she gives it all out. The other thing that is really powerful is if you're, if you're a teacher, if you're teaching anything, just teach the same content that you're going to be teaching in your program. Just give out the same stuff. Give almost all of it away. Teach, teach the same stuff. Talk about your business. Educate people about your business. Inspire people. They're going to want to know more from you. Even if you teach them on, on the exact same thing about, uh, about how to change a tire. If I was a mechanic and I had a mechanic shop, I would teach people how to change tires. I would educate them and really gives them something by going to my, my social media channel. They're still coming to my shop. They're still coming to my shop. They're still coming. So really want to educate and inspire and inform people on, on your topic. Would you put video over blogging if you've never done either? Would you, would you choose to do video over blogging? Yes. If you have not started, would you choose to do video over blogging? Absolutely. Thousand percent. It's everything is going towards video, and the the point I was was going to make is with the people that I work with, with the so I work with people that are really getting into the space, really doing that shift from their background in ten to fifteen years and whatever it is to to become new coaches. And we have this conversation, and they're like, "I can't do video. I can't do it, right? Because <laughs> it's scary at first, right? You can." It's, it becomes easier with practice, with, it becomes fun, where most of the people that I work with, they're, they're on Instagram, so I, I suggest that they start in the stories and they record videos of themselves in there. And so two things, just assume nobody's watching, because in the beginning, nobody is. <laughs> Number two, just, just be like you're having a conversation with your friend or your brother or your sister or your anyone just just hold them in your mind's eye when i started doing video i was i was ex i was going through all this transformation and, and and then i was starting to travel a little bit more after that so i was i was i was on my machine i was on the phone i was i was typing out all these different of the same message that my friends here my friends there people over here and i'm like forget that right <laughs> i'm gonna make one video if they want to know what what's going on in my world they can follow me on on instagram so i shoot one video it saves me time it becomes easier would you, would you launch a YouTube channel? Would I launch a YouTube channel? Depends on what your goals are. <laughs> depends on what your goals are. Depends how much effort. Again, depends on what your goals are. I would, I would not spend a ton of time creating a powerful YouTube channel. Because those are, it's linked to, to my goals, which are different than yours, which I know. I would spend some time, which I am, but I'm spending more time over here in the real world, nurturing real connections. If you're trying to drive and create a sustainable platform for years to come that feed into uh, an event that has ongoing videos, like you are, it is a great place to do it. Good. 
So content that converts. Again, see, see that talk from, from February. It'll, it'll help answer a lot of questions, I hope. And, and if not, uh, we can be in touch with me for sure. Cindy. All right, Cindy. Cindy started like, like Cindy's a client of mine. Cindy started, I love Cindy. Cindy's great. Cindy, if you're watching this, she's over in, in North Vancouver. Cindy started, and we've had this conversation before, and, and she knows all this. It's great. Cindy started at the ground level, ground level, going from her, her old world, just like this, this, this pull, this calling to, to move into this new coaching world. Absolutely. And still to this day, a little bit, not good with technology, <laughs> not good with technology not good with technology. So if she can do it, you can do it. What, what she's done, you know, she's built up her Instagram. She's, she's getting clients of her own, a lot of clients of her own. And this is what, so this is the power of, of what coaching really means and, and, and getting, and the other aspect about coaching is, you know, I worked for, for over 12 years as an engineer. I was part of some, some pretty amazing projects. But in, in the short time, relatively short time that I've been a coach, I've gotten a hundred times more, more really personal testimonials that, that I have really impacted people's life. And it's so powerful. It's so powerful. This is what she said after only a couple, couple months of working together. Every element of my life in the last four or five months has altered. Every element has come together. I see exactly where I'm going and how much further I'm going. So Cindy, just, just, uh, just in the last couple months, I mean, her goal is to leave her corporate job and, and do this full time as well. She's, she's now making more money in her, in her coaching business than she is in her, her job. She's, she's selling out retreats that she's holding. She's, she's got people, calling her up during the day. She's got people coming to her house on Tuesday nights for these events that she holds. And she's, and she's moving towards exactly where, where she wants to go. And it's really super proud of her. And she still struggles with technology, but uh, work in progress. The blueprint. The blueprint. Now we've covered, we've covered a lot of things today. I want to give you as battery my friend we're running a little low on uh, it might be unplugged somewhere uh -oh. awesome thank you we covered a lot of information today and I want to give you as much as possible but there's only so much that I can share in this short time that we have together and uh, as well this this blueprint that I've created, it touches on a lot of the topics that, that we covered today. And again, you can watch the video on, on YouTube when it's available in a couple days. But this blueprint, and this is the question that was asked earlier, and it's the same question for a lot of new coaches. They just, you can't see all the things that need to happen and the order that they need to happen in. And I was the same way. Like when I first started, I'm like, what? I need to do all this over here. I need to do all this over there. Why is there not, as an engineer, like, you know, how I do things, right? A choo, choo, choo. There, there's an order and a sequence to them. So I, I created this. I created a blueprint for new coaches. I created the thing that I really wish that I had when I first got going, when I first got into this world. And my 10-step engineered process to, for new coaches to help them get, get new clients. I want to share with you a little bit about it. You can get this for free on my website. It's, it's all yours to take. It is, I would describe it as dense. I would describe it as dense. There's a lot into it. I just put, put everything that I've learned in, in both in my business and helping other people get into it. But I'll give you a, give you a brief highlight about, about what is in there. So these, these are really the steps that I've seen repeatedly in, in people that I work with to, to go through and get clear on, on their business that they want to create. And you know the people that I work with when, when you say coaching, it really narrows into, into one, you know, one field or one frame. And it really sort of locks down what people think coaching is. Coaching is so many things. It's got such a wide spectrum. And the people that I work with, you know, they're, they're wellness coaches, they're, they're life coaches, they're becoming business coaches. 
Some of them, you know, one of my clients has a background in genetics and she's combining that with a new field of coaching. One of my clients has, a, um, she's focusing on body image and creating a whole program about that. She just sold out an event for her program that's starting on Thursday. So there's this whole range of, of, of what a coach really means. And again, it's, it's really based on what people's backgrounds are and what their, what their interest is where their interests lie. And, and often that same transformation that they've been through in themselves, they want to help other people through that as well. So here are the steps where it really starts. And we touched on some of these earlier. Your why, your why, why, why are you doing this? Why are you putting yourself through this new dance? Why are you taking this, this journey? Because you're always gonna return back to step number one when, when things get tough. Number two, so, so important with, with coaching. And you heard a bit about my story earlier, but you really need to own your story. And some people say, oh, I don't have a story. You know, I just, I just kind of got here, right? Everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. And the important thing about owning your story is it's that whole piece on authenticity, which we've all heard over and over lately. But you really attract the people that you want to work with by, by sharing and being authentic about what you have been through and what your, what your story is. And who are those people? That's step number three, your target audience, getting really clear on, on the people that, that you want to work with. And we all, when we all start as a coach, and just like, like I did and I said myself, we want to help everybody. Everybody. <laughs> save the world i am going to save the world but it's going to take a couple steps to get there and we're all going to save it together but when you try to help everybody you end up helping nobody when you end up when you try to help everybody you end up helping nobody your message gets lost and you can't really attract the people that you that you wish to work with so i'll save you i'll save you months and months it'll 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 still stay it'll still still take a little bit for this to land but I'll, I'll save i'll save you guys months and months your target audience, the people that you want to work with, is you before your transformation. It's you a year or two ago, or whenever you did this change in your life. Those are your people, because those people want, want to learn how you did it. They want to learn what steps you took. Those people you know, you know what they're thinking and you know what they're feeling. And they see you as someone who has made some progress. You're not perfect and got everything figured out by any means. None of us do. But you have been through those, those same steps. Those, those are your people. Those are your target audience. After that, now that you know who your target audience is, you want to build up your community, whether that's online, on, on Instagram, or a Facebook page. Perhaps you create a Facebook page with this very specific audience that you are trying to serve. A client of mine, she she started her Facebook page early in, in June. She had a very specific niche on who she wanted to target. She sent it out to her existing world, her, her existing real life contacts, and then a couple other people have been attracted since then. And there's, she's already has 150 people in there. Just by owning it and putting herself out there and being very clear on, on who she wants to serve. You need to build your community because this is where your clients are going to come from. Create content that converts that you're gonna feed into your community. That's step number five. There's 10 steps. Number six, you know, once you're, once you're ready to go, you're gonna do your first package. Maybe, maybe you're looking to do retreats, maybe you're looking to do group coaching, maybe you're looking to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever really resonates with you, whatever you're excited about. Do the thing you're excited about. And often your first package is going to be very similar or perhaps the exact same as as the coaching that you went through you know if you if you did a one-on-one -on -one program over three months perhaps that's what you're most used to and that's that's what resonates the most with you so you you do that with your people because that's what feels good and that what 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 feels right and just to add on top of that you know a lot of the stuff that i'm talking about here and a lot of the items that I, I help people with are, are really the business side of, of getting your coaching going. And I wanted to mention, like I'm, I'm certified with the Certified Coaches Federation and by absolutely all means, 
do the certifications, continue to get the, the education, do all that stuff. Like I'm going to be doing that forever. So do all that. But where I find is where a lot of them lack is in this department and really helping you with, with your business and, and, and all these other things and, and your content, and getting your clients. Often they just say that as a, a little bit to the end of, of their program and it doesn't really serve their people. So your first package, do, do what you're comfortable with. Do, do the piece that you use with, with your coaching relationship that you have, because most coaches have coaches, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, it'd be like going to a dentist who doesn't go to a dentist, right? You've got to really believe and trust and know and, um, in what you're doing, what you're creating. After that, and after, <laughs> after you have a, a great idea of what your first package is, you need to sell it to people. You need to move people. You need to motivate people to get into it. Philosophers over here have all these great ideas. Leaders move people into action. Leaders get people to mobilize into their programs. And sales, none, none of the, nobody wants to be salesy. Nobody wants to be salesy. You know, the people that I work with, we all want to change the world and, and help people out. They're all great, really heart-centered people that I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to call my clients. And there's a way to, to go about this sales process that is not salesy in, in how you communicate your message, in how you have your calls, and all of those great things. But that's, that's step number seven is getting clear and confident on that. After that, after you've had some clients for, for a while, you may start to see some some similarities or some patterns in the people that you're working with that perhaps you didn't identify or you didn't anticipate when you first got started. And it's really important to, to be aware of what these patterns are, what people you're attracting and what they're asking of you. Like what, what do they want to learn? How do they want to grow? And perhaps at this point, step number eight, you may shift your, you may shift your target a little bit. For me, I started out in, in, more general life coaching and then and then start shifting towards helping develop new coaches because that's what people were asking that's what they wanted to do the same thing that i were, was doing now the sneaky part is i still do all that life coaching in within all these steps within all of my programs because it's all the same stuff and to help people build confidence in in shooting videos and putting themselves out there it's all the same good stuff they, they just don't see it they feel it though it's really great so after you find your message, you're going to move on to, you know, you're, you're starting to feel good. You're starting to, to shoot for the stars. You're, you're going to want to build up your personal brand and position yourself as a, an authority, get on the stages, do, the, do all the podcasts, you know, write some articles, whatever makes the most sense for you. You're going to really craft a vision of, of where you are going forward, who you want to serve, and what, you know, what, this, what, this, what you're creating, what this image is, what this business is that, that you are creating. And towards the end, it's, it's how to scale. It's how to scale. If you've been doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching, perhaps you're thinking about, about doing group coaching. Perhaps you're thinking about doing online programs. That stays to the end. That is, one of the la that is the last step because it's so important that I find is to have those intimate one-on-one -on -one coaching relationships first so you know what to put in your online program. You have to know what the people are thinking, what their pain points are, what their challenges are, so you can serve them with really good content and, and help them out. So this, this blueprint is available. Like I said, it's dense. It's got a lot of information in there, but it also breaks it down in a, in a sequential way where there's space to write out and, and do some exercises and really really answer the questions that I prompt you with in there to, to get clear on, on your coaching program and where you are going. So for everyone in the room and for everyone online, you can just go to my website, get it completely free, michaeltranmer.com. It's there. I hope and trust and know that it will save a few people a little bit of time and it's of, of great value. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Twenty-ish years ago, 
coaching profession did not exist. Coaching was reserved for sports mm -hmm. and it has just risen like a phoenix. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because it works. It's so powerful. It's so powerful to have someone challenge you, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. What coaching does, it accelerates time. Because when you have someone else that sees something in you that you don't see, yeah. they help you get there a lot faster. Okay. And they bring in this whole new perspective that, that perhaps you aren't, again, that you aren't seeing. So they're offering a different perspective. They're keeping you accountable and they accelerate time. And they challenge you and they stretch you and it's uncomfortable. Then they pull you back together a bit. But it's just a, it's such a powerful relationship. Okay, beautiful. And thank you so much on behalf of VBN for sharing this wonderful content, wonderful wisdom with us. My pleasure.